Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Kevin Osterhoff. I'm the Director of Business Systems Transformation here at WISPAC. Uh, WISPAC, we're a carbonated beverage manufacturer and distributor. Um, we're owned by a group of independent Pepsi-Cola bottlers and distributors. Uh, they all own the rights to distribute Pepsi-Cola products in their franchise territories. Um, WISPAC's been in business for about 54 years now. Uh, we've also developed our own line of brands um, products. Uh, that include things like uh, Claire Bruin drinking and sparkling waters, uh, Uber water, hogwash kids drinks, uh, and bubbler. Uh, and if you haven't tried a bubbler yet, I highly recommend it. Um, I've been with the organization for about 30 years, uh, coming up on that in December. Um, I moved into the Director of Business Systems Transformation role uh, last year. Um, my focus with this role is to, well, as it says, transform our business systems. Um, specifically the JD Edwards platform uh, and the systems that integrate in with the JD Edwards platform that we use to run our operations here. Um, the idea is that uh, we'll improve our overall operations and stream streamline our operations and also allow us to uh, be a more data driven organization by getting capturing the data that uh, JD Edwards is capturing and getting that out into systems that we can report on it and use those analytics to help improve our business. OK, so that gives you guys a little bit of an idea as to, you know, who Kevin is and, you know, what the business that uh, WizPack has, has been in. Um, the next thing I thought, you know, we thought it'd be interesting for you guys to understand is sort of what WizPack's history is with with J.D. Edwards and how they've sort of evolved J.D. Edwards, um, you know, through, you know, through, um, you know, the, the, the time they've had it. Um, so this next video clip is is. Kevin talking about the the history of WizPack and JD Edwards. Our journey with JD Edwards started back in the in the 1990s. We implemented World in 1997, and at that time, we were pretty heavily modified. I'd say uh, in 2005, we went through an upgrade to One World XE that actually started in 2002. It took us three years because of our modifications. Plus, we implemented additional capabilities that came with the One World environment. Um, in 2014, uh, we went through an upgrade to 9.1. Um, you know, that was focused on, again, implementing additional technologies that JD Edwards added uh, and removing some of our modifications that were no longer needed because that functionality was now included in base. Uh, in 2019, uh, we upgraded again, going to 9.2. Uh, and with that upgrade, again, focused on newer technologies and removing some of our modifications. Yeah, I'd say our upgrade in 2005 and our upgrade in 2014 were relatively painful, I want to say, uh, and time consuming uh, just because of the amount of modifications we had at the time uh, and the effort to upgrade or retrofit those modifications. Uh, in 2019, when we did our upgrade, um, we came across DWS and their capabilities to help with retrofitting those modifications. Um, had a lot of conversations with DWS uh, and our business partner at the time uh, decided to move forward with using DWS to do the retrofits. Um, that process went really well. Um, you know, it was probably a five month process from the word go to the word, you know, until we were done with, uh, with done with the retrofit process. And during that time, they really analyzed the code. They analyzed our modifications. They were able to identify modifications that we had in the system that were no longer required because they were now part of base code. They were also able to identify a lot of objects we had that had retrofits or modifications to them that were really no longer needed because we weren't using them. So we were able to cut down on our list of modific modified objects by quite a bit during that upgrade. Um, the other thing with the retrofit is as they returned code back to us and as we started going through that code um, and doing the testing, you know, we probably ended up with maybe a dozen to two dozen of uh, items we had to send back to them for review or check out of the more than thousand items that we had objects modified uh, in the system. So it re went really well, uh, went quick, uh, you know, great job by the team uh, at DWS doing the retrofits and helping us through that. Okay. So that gives you an idea as to where they've been and what they've done. Um, you know, lots of lots of change over the years from, you know, the early 2000s to, you know, with an upgrade in in 2005. Um, it took as long as three years um, and then um, the upgrade in 2014. 
and 2019. Um, and it is around 2019, you know, that, uh, um, you know, 9.2 was, was out. Um, people were talking about what upgrades needed to look like and what it meant to upgrade to 9.2, um, where where Oracle had changed sort of the, the engineering, um, the, the the approach to engineering and uh, continuous, you know, and, and, and gone forward with continuous delivery. And then we're, you know, where we, we are, where we are today with, um, you know, with uh, 2000, you know, 2023, um, you know, with the release 23 coming out sort of towards the end of last year. Um, and, uh, you know, you know, the world, the world moving on. So the next thing I asked Kevin to sort of talk about was, you know, what, you know, why code current and, you know, what, what is, what, what does he think the benefits were going to be and how, how are the benefits going to actually, um, you know, be, uh, you know, be realized, you know, from a, from an IT, you know, transformation, um, you know, delivery sort of perspective, but also from a from a business business management and operational perspective as well. So this is what this is what Kevin had to say about the code current strategy. Yeah. So now we get to you know 2023, 2022, uh, and you know we're talking about code current again and getting upgrades and getting the modifications that JD Edwards has made to the system. Um, you know, and and we start having discussions as an organization about you know, moving forward with code currency and the investment in that and the need to continue to bring those enhancements into the system uh, and also replace some of our modifications we have in the system. So, you know, as an organization, we decided code current is the way we wanted to go. Um, the commitment from our executive team is that every year we're going to go through a code current event. Uh, we're going to upgrade. We're going to stay on the latest release of JD Edwards. We're going to continue to take advantage of that new functionality but also every year take a look back and say, you know, what can we replace that may have been part of JD Edwards before? Or in some cases, we've got modifications that are hindering our ability to use the base code in JD Edwards. And how do we take those modifications out so we can take advantage of what's in that base code? So the commitments there from the organization, um, you know, the concern was is, OK, are we going to go through these projects that are going to be a long drawn out project every year? Um, you know, and we've got a way around that. And, uh, you know, part of that is going to be on our team, but part of that is also going to be using the tools from DWS that we used as part of our 9.2 upgrade that we found very successful. Okay. So, but yeah, so now we get, so, you know, a real key thing, you know, in, in, you know, in in talking about code currency um, and continuous delivery is is always the the modified footprint, um, and getting um, you know getting as many modifications um, and into as good a position or as good a shape as possible, so that they're they're easily identified and easily maintained and easily retrofitted as and when retrofitting is required. But then also, you know, eliminating, um, you know, eliminating modifications, you know, where you can, you know, as the software evolves, um, you know, understanding where you've made changes, critically evaluating the changes that you've made or the modifications that you've made um, and seeing whether you can back those out and and get get a, get away from it. So the next thing that I asked Kevin to talk about and Kevin Kevin sort of answered was sort of the the conversation you know that he he needed to have have with the business and you know how he sold the idea of code currency to the business um and and got got the business to to provide the support that he mentioned you know you know just just a minute ago you know he said that you know his his management and the executive at, at Wizpack are prepared for them to um, go ahead, go ahead and and run projects to stay code current each and every year. So yeah, now that now that the organization's on board with the idea of code current and remaining code current, uh, it was a matter of figuring out how we're going to do that. And through discussions with DWS um, and our business partners as we're working on these code current events, you know, we decided to go ahead with the three year agreement with DWS to use their tool sets for the retrofits, um, you know, doing a code current event in each of the next three years. And alongside of that, using the DWS Swift test tool uh, to assist with the testing on that. We think these two tools go together uh, really well. 
um, and they're going to help our organization basically over the next three years. And as we move forward past these three years, shrink down the time frame and the effort that's going to be required by our internal teams uh, to complete these code current events. So this year, um, you know, DWS did the retrofit again, uh, and really it took two months uh, from start to start to finish to get through the retrofit process, and that was that included the extracts, the analysis that they had to do on their end to identify what had to be completed, what could be removed, um, you know, and, and then doing the retrofit and getting that code set back to us. So really didn't take the time frame, time that it took, you know, back in 2019 when we used the tool. So looking at that, we expect next year it's going to be an even shorter time frame for the retrofit process to happen because they've got our code set. They know what the changes are going to be and they can help us shrink that time frame. And then, of course, with the DWS SWIFT test tool, uh, using that in an automated fashion to help us get through the testing so we don't have to have people hammering on a keyboard uh, or using devices to be able to get through the testing process. Uh, we can use the automated testing that DWS provides with the SWIFT test tool and be able to shrink that down, you know, so our team doesn't have to spend that time. And again, our, our plan this year is about five months to get through the upgrade process. Next year, we're hoping to get that down to about three months uh, and keep it in that two to three month time frame every year going forward by using DWS to do our retrofit. We don't have to have our team spend time doing that. We just have to spend our have our team spend time, you know, coordinating. Uh, and then also working with the DWS SWIFT tool to make sure we're testing out. And then, of course, at the end, we'll do user acceptance testing where we will have people on the keyboard. We will start running normal transactions through it. We will test everything out uh, and make sure it's ready to go. But with those tools, DWS doing the retrofit and DWS SWIFT test tool, we expect our time frame every year to decrease uh, and taking the load off of our people as we work through these upgrades. Okay, that's great. You know, Kevin, Kevin's giving you a good, good sense as to, you know, how he's worked. He's mentioned a couple of times, you know, the, you know, partners, um, you know, systems integrators that they work with, um, you know, giving them advice and guidance around their infrastructure, um, as well as, you know, the maintenance and management of JD Edwards. Um, and then also he talks about, you know, DWS as being a, you know, as a partner with whom they, they work, um, you know, taking advantage of our services, which I'll explain, and using some of the tools and technologies that we've developed to help people, um, you know, test and 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 uh, um, ensure quality, um, you know, of JD Edwards, you know, with each and every project project that they that they run. So as to close things out, you know, I asked Kevin to just kind of summarize exactly where they're at in terms of the situation, um, and that's what he's done. That's what he's done here. All right. Yeah, to wrap things up, uh, you know, working with DWS this last time around, um, you know, it's been a great experience. Uh, you know, they were able to identify we've got you know roughly a thousand modified objects, which isn't that bad, but really identified there's 166 objects that were modified by JD Edwards between update three and update seven, where we have modifications in those. So, you know, that gives us the ability by them identifying those 166 modules we can really focus our testing around those 166 modules. That's not to say we're not going to do a full set of testing across the whole system, uh, but really that's the area we need to focus on because that's where the retrofitted code is at. That's where any of our modifications may impact how JD Edwards has now uh, changed those objects. So I, I think it's really going to cut down on our on our time to get through this process. Again, every year cut down more and more, but then also identifying those objects is really going to help us focus our testing where it needs to be uh, and and get through the process a little quicker. And I think at the end of the day, um, the whole team will feel a lot better about the process by uh, by knowing we've done the testing, we've used the tools, uh, and we've also, at the end of the day, saved a lot of money by not having to have a, a you know a large set of uh, developers sitting around doing ER compares to find out where those modifications are at and how to retrofit those. So uh, DWS has done a great job for us and we really look forward to working with them over the coming years uh, through the same process every year. Hey, so that was Kevin and, you know, I have to thank Kevin for, um, you know, obviously for, you know, his custom uh, DWS, you know, we've got a great relationship and he was obviously willing to take time out of his busy schedule to, you know, share 
share with uh, you know you guys um, and anybody who listens to this um, you know video um, sort of where they've been what they've done and what their experience has been through you know a number of upgrades and now into um, an approach um, you know where they will um, keep um, where they will keep um, current um, once a year um, and you know when we when we started to talk to Kevin after you know the upgrade we did with them during 2019, you know we we started to we said it at, at and around that time that you know when he was ready, um, we'd be very interested in discussing what his plans were um, and what the plans of the business were. Um, now that they were on nine two, um, you know to position themselves uh, to take advantage of all of the good work that Oracle is doing in terms of the development and evolution of um, Enterprise One. And, you know, we we have a process driven approach um, that I wanted to share with you guys. Um, and, you know, I was going to take take you through that and then talk a little bit more about that and, and about some of the things that we're doing specifically in support of this process. You know, any any process and when anybody talks about um, code currency, you know, it, it is um, systems integrator um, and um, service provider and um, tools kind of independent. You know, this is a framework, you know, for, um, you know, for helping people come to terms um, with the opportunity um, of staying code current, um, you know, to co get code current, you know, you have to go through analysis, you know, every single time. Um, no one has a purely uh, vanilla version of JD Edwards. And even if they did have a vanilla version of JD Edwards, you need to understand how Oracle has changed the software um, from point to point. Now, one of the things I always remind people with 9.2, you know, um, but prior to 9-2, you know, we always had very significant sort of milestones and events, you know, that 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 sort of guided um, us through our um, evolution, um, you know, 9-0 to 9-1, 9-1 to 9-2. Um, and now that we're on 9-2, um, those milestones, those guideposts, if you will, are less important um, because with 9.2, um, you can get current up to any point in time that is that makes sense in your business. So it's very easy, and I talk to a lot of people, and, and it's very easy to try and think about getting current around release 22, release 23, release 24, what have you. But the reality is, is that those 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 release identifiers, you know, the the fact that Oracle has created these releases is is primarily just for marketing purposes to demonstrate and to make it clear that the software is 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 evolving and it is changing and that you can move, you know, you can continually move forward. Um, you know, you can, you know, you can, um, uh, you can just pick a date, you know, to get current, you know, up to up to. It doesn't have to be a a, a, a release 22, 23, 24 sort of date, um, and that gives you guys a lot more freedom and control. But as you choose those dates, you've got to do analysis around your code base, the code that Oracle has. You know, from when you last got, you know, last got software from Oracle to what you're bringing, getting yourself current to. We need to figure out exactly what that is from a business impact perspective, as well as from a code uh, code base retrofit perspective. So, you know, you need to do that analysis. You need to think about what you've analyzed from a business perspective and from a code base perspective. And then from the code base perspective, you need to do the retrofitting. Um, and then you've got to bring that retrofitted code and your understanding of how the software changes into play and do the implementation. Um, and I say implement because implementing can involve um, changes to the software, can involve change management, training, um, documentation, you know, changes, all of that stuff sort of fits in that implementation sort of bucket. And then you've got to test and then you've got to go live. 
but it's not, you know, it's not rocket science. Um, and it's, it, you know, this process, you know, is, as I say, it's, uh, um, it's something that we think people should kind of come to terms with um, and think about um, irrespective of who they're working with, um, you know, whether they, they do you look after the sub whether you look after the software yourselves or whether you have a systems integrator with whom you work closely um, you know if you're working with a systems integrator you should be thinking about these steps and what these steps look like and how you're going to get through each of these steps in the best possible way um, making making your upgrade projects or update projects as cost effective and as quick and painless as possible okay so, you know, what is the value of the approach? It's, you know, it's very simple, it's repeatable, you know, it's easy to manage, um, and it can be well resourced. You have to resource these projects appropriately. Um, you know, Kevin talked about his business partners. Um, DWS is one of them, um, and he talked about his resources. Um, and, uh, you know, you've got to have your own resources systems integration resources potentially, um, specialist service provider resources and tools and technologies. And it's those four things that are sort of around the, you know, the 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 around the around the outside of the resourced um, sort of a pro, you know, um, uh, hexagon. Um, you know, are the things that, uh, you know, we need to talk about. And DWS is a specialist service provider and we have tools and technologies to help people. Um, and, you know, we, you know, we, we, we enjoy and, and have a lot of experience that we can bring to the table. You know, and we enjoy having the conversations with companies about where they're going, what they're doing and how they're, how they're going to um, get current and stay current. So, you know, it's all about staying in control um, and, you know, adhering to a well-defined process um, and doing the same things year after year. And if you choose not to update the software every year, you might choose to update the software every 18 months or every two years or what have you. What you want to do is sell you know, repeatability and consistency and simplicity, you know, to the business. Um, you know, you want cost predictability and timelines. You know, Kevin talks about, you know, two to three month projects every single year. Um, you know, he talks about, um, you know, reducing his modified footprint and, you know, doing a better job each and every time, you know, that he run, they run one of these projects. And, you know, that's what, you know, uh, um, a, a process driven approach sort of supports and reinforces these sort of these sort of benefits, um, you know, that, and, you know, around around control and, and predictability and what have you. OK, um, let's talk about what, you know, what you might do in terms of executing and, and getting through, um, you know, forming a strategy and then and then delivering on that strategy. Um, you know, I've I've talked a little bit about DWS. You know, we are a specialist systems integrator and software vendor. You know, we're not a full service systems integrator. You know, we don't we don't stand up and try and help customers. Uh, you know, in and around every aspect of their their use of of, of JD Edwards Enterprise One, um, but uh, you know, we we do provide a full range of development technical services. Um, and alongside of our systems integration service capability, we do have testing products that we've we brought to market for both JD Edwards and the Oracle Fusion Cloud apps. Been an Oracle partner for 25 plus years. Um, you know, we've got a really good, um, you know, loyal global customer base, and we've got people that work for us and helping us um, develop our software and provide services to our customers in in 10 different countries. Um, and you know when you think about um, you know when you you know when you think about um, executing a strategy, you know when we talk about resourcing and we talk about who's part of the projects, you know who's going to be part of the projects that you guys are running to get current and to stay current. Um, you know we're we're one of those companies that um, 
you know, that we'd like to, you know, we'd like to be in the mix and and to and to help help you guys realize your vision and deliver deliver code currency and 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 facilitate continuous innovation, you know, with the, you know, the businesses that you guys serve. Um, you know, as a business, DWS is is um, you know pretty much everywhere you know you know and can be involved everywhere from when companies you know decide on and buy and implement jd edwards for the first time through to you know the whole code currency thing but what's interesting this with this this chart is you sort of see everything that we do which is represented by the circles sort of in the middle these are different products and services that we have and you know can bring to bear they all sort of build to us helping companies um, do a really good job of of staying code current, um, and everything that we've done and developed and and brought to market, you know, from a product and service perspective, all have you know have have a role to play, um, you know, as as companies stay current. And it doesn't matter what's going on from a um, you know from an infrastructure perspective, whether you're on premise in the cloud or hybrid. Um, Obviously, if you're um, at all on prem, you know there are load test opportunities, you know stress volume test kind of requirements that um, um, you know you might might um, you know wrestle with, and you know we can help with those things. But you know it's it's all about the um, you know analysis of your code base, the impact of um, uh, the changes in terms of development and in terms of business impact. Um, and then uh, delivering on the retrofitting and helping ensure that there's a really good quality, well-tested solution going forward. From a services perspective, you know, we, uh, you know, Kevin talked about us helping them with their upgrade. And, you know, we've helped, you know, tens, if not hundreds of customers over the year upgrade from, you know, various releases um, to, you know, 9.1 or 9.0, 9.1, 9.2. Um, and, you know, all of our analytic retrofit work is sort of based on, you know, some dimension and analyze sort of intellectual property. Um, and we use outputs from our dimension analysis activities to run professional projects, you know, fixed price, fixed timeline, retrofit projects. Um, and, you know, those can either be one off code current event projects um, or, you know, if if companies are looking beyond a single event and thinking about a three-year strategy like Kevin and and um, Wizpack, you know we can we can not just quote for a single one-off code current retrofit project. We can enter into a managed code current service where we'll you know we'll look after your code and work with you to keep your code current over that course of a three-year period. Um, and those represent you know, those three services, if you will, analyze professional and tempo um, and variations of, of those services kind of represent what we're doing from a specialist development um, partner perspective in the J.D. Edwards space. So analyzing professional one-off code current, um, you know, fixed price, fixed timeline, zero defect, and dimension tempo is sort of a three-year term agreement with cost certainty and predictability. And, you know, when Kevin talks about um, and talked about conversations he had with the business, uh, you know, I know that the senior management liked the idea that they knew there was going to be a project once a year. They knew how much they were going to have to spend in order to keep, you know, get the retrofitting done and they knew that they were going to get quality you know because they were taking advantages of our of our products um, and and intellectual property and our, and our services the other thing that kevin talked about um you know it was was some of the testing that they're doing and and you know i think everyone can relate to the fact that um in particular, if you're in a um, in a regulated industry, you know, life sciences or a pharmaceutical sort of business or something like that, um, you know, the you know, requirements around testing and documentation of testing and evidence, um, producing evidence of uh, you know good, good quality are are there, um, and you know we've sort of addressed the. Um, 
sort of the uh, the testing problem, um, you know, by developing, you know, a suite of products for the J.D. Edwards Enterprise One community, you know, where we um, do business impact analysis with Dimension Focus. You know, we do scripting and automation with Swift Test and we we provide, um, you know, stress volume load test capabilities with with Dimension Load Test, which is, you know, which takes advantage of the Swift Test to, to do that. Um, and you know it's great you know as 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 we work with someone like kevin and some of our other customers um you know it's 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 normal you know for people to to you know look at the the process that they're going to be going through you know every single year or 18 months or what have you um and decide that you know they don't just want help with the retrofitting they want help with testing and they don't want to um, place as many demands on the business um, in respect to testing um, as they you know as, if, if, as they would if they were doing all the testing manually so they're automating the testing um, they're they're doing um, a better job of testing they're doing a more thorough job of testing and they're producing um, documents um, evidence of the testing that they've done um, you know automatically so that when they get to the users you know the users are really you know they're not finding problems or issues they're there to validate that the testing the job that's been done um, by the project team is really good and to do proper acceptance testing um you know just sign off acceptance testing to sort of work and that kind of thing is there 